Hey what's up everyone, it's FryGuy here and I'm here to talk to you guys about my thoughts on Hyperscape. We're going to divide this discussion into several points with most being my opinion, so bear with me. This is going to get a little biased, which the title of the video should point to. First we're going to talk about the game. Man, this game is a refresher in the Battle Royale scene with its flashy lights and the fast-paced movement It is unlike any other BR in the scene. The Fortnite kids are going to go bananas over it. In fact, I ran into a couple of people who were telling me that Fortnite is dead and this is the game that's going to replace the scene. Now, I don't know if Ubisoft will be able to compete with the money pools Epic Games puts out, but we can all hope the game really blows up. My only concern is balancing, and that's where we're going to start at. We're going to start with weapons, seeing this is an FPS battle royale. There's nine different weapons to choose from in the game, and each can be fused to become higher levels up to level 4, giving you boosts in ammo and damage with each level. Starting off, you have the two pistols, the D-Tap and the Riot 1. The D-Tap is inspired by the Smart Pistol from Titanfall, where the bullets travel on their own and hit opponents' bodies by locking onto them, giving you guaranteed hits. The Riot 1, however, is different in the case that it's a six-shooter revolver. It reminds me of the Wingman from Apex. Bear with me because I see a lot of similarities with Apex in this game. The D-Tab doesn't hit hard at all, but with sustained fire it can melt early game, and at level 4 or even end game it can be annoying. Meanwhile, the Riot 1 hits hard as a rock and can 3-tap at level 4. Then you have two different full auto weapons, one being an AR, the other being a minigun. The assault rifle is called the Ripper. The Ripper is an assault rifle that does what the name refers, rips. Body shots doesn't deal much damage, but headshots are where it's at with being a level 4 headshot hit for 16 apiece, so aim higher agents. Then you got the minigun called the Hexfire. It is such an amazing weapon and is so satisfying to melt players with it. It only deals 4 damage per body shot and 5 to the head, but with its massive clip allows sustained fire to be a little overpowered. So overpowered, in fact, that a few days into the test, it got a nerf. In my opinion, they killed the weapon. It's no longer your primary weapon you engage fights with, but rather a mop for cleanup, sadly. Rest in peace to Hexfire. You have one shotgun called the Mammoth. It's just your average run of the mill pump shotgun that can deal massive damage at level 4, even two shotting players. One shot to the head if they're close enough. You need to be very accurate with it though, since the game is very fast paced, it can be hard to hit all your shots, but a skilled player can make a really good use of it. The sniper rifle is called Prototype V. It's a 3 mag clip bolt action sniper rifle that only at level 4 can it one shot headshot players. Some people say it's overpowered because the game is hitscan, which means wherever you aim and pull the trigger, that bullet will hit its target. No leading your shots, no bullet drop. Pure accuracy, so mouse and keyboard players that are skilled will love this weapon. Now onto the launchers, which in my opinion should be taken out and replaced in the game. The most recent patch nerfed two of them, but it isn't enough to stop launchers since, well, they're AOE launchers. Area of effect. The first one we'll talk about is the Skybreaker. It has a one ammo clip and shoots an AOE bubble similar to Zarya's ultimate from Overwatch. It deals about 50% of damage if you take splash damage, but at level 4 it can one hit if direct damage is dealt. It's a fantastic utility weapon to use to engage in fights, taking your opponent's life straight away, leaving them vulnerable. Then you have the Salvo, which is a grenade launcher that at level 4 can hold 9 grenades in a clip. It can 4 hit players even after the patch where it was nerfed. It was a featured weapon in the game solo mode, Dark Haze. More on the game modes later. The grenades explode on impact, so launcher is a very effective tool indoors, but a skilled player can use it to their advantage and wipe out opponents outside of buildings. Very triggering. Then you have the Komodo, which is a plasma launcher that reminds me of the plasma caster from Halo 5. It shoots an explosive in a straight line and it explodes on impact, dealing AoE or even direct damage. It was buffed in the patch and then it saw a lot of use where every player picked it up, it was so good. It's a mouse and keyboard player's fantasy. It can have up to 7 bullets at level 4, making it insanely powerful. Those were all the weapons in Hyperscape. My thoughts? Well, I believe the game needs more bullet weapons, like potentially a burst AR or a submachine gun of sorts. Or maybe even a single shot DMR to really take away from the constant explosive spamming. The game can be very fast paced, so you think being hit with an explosive is hard? Well, it's not. It's very easy to be hit by an explosive outside because of the city's layout. 
The fact that grenade launchers only detonates if it hits a player means it can be bounced off structures to then hit players. Plus in squads, if one player runs Skybreaker, one runs Salvo, and one runs Komodo with the hex fires or mop, the other teams will, without a similar lot, I will be completely out of DPS by the other team, resulting in a lot of quick deaths. Don't like the hex fire? Then pick up another explosive to rain on your lobby's parade. Also, my thoughts on a sniper rifle being OP? I don't think so, but there is an argument. The fact that it's hit scan, it can one hit, somebody can literally be across the map and hit that shot and end another player's 20 bomb easily. It's triggering, but it's an argument. They should implement, implement more bullet weapons, like completely remove explosives. It will make the game a lot more skill oriented rather than just a paintball custom game on Halo 3. Now let's move on to the next point, hacks. Depending on what game mode you're playing, you have a certain number of hacks available to pick up. For example, Squad's game mode has all of them available, but in Dark Haze solos, only a few of them are available. For now, we will talk about all of them. There are 9 hacks in the game. Hacks are considered the abilities of the games, and you can hold 2 at a time, and they can also be fused to become level 4, just like the weapons. With each level, the cooldown is shorter and shorter. Let's start with heals. Heals drops a circle on the ground where you stand in it, and you guess what? You get healed. Faster heals at level 4, by the way. Mine is a tracking explosive that you can throw down even at a distance, and it'll lock onto a player and it will track them until it hits them for a lot of damage. You can also destroy it by shooting at it. It'll emit like a really weird sound whenever it, you know, confirms the lock on, so be warned. You then have ball, which turns you into a big ass ball that'll bounce off of other structures. Other players can shoot you out of it pretty quickly, so it can be a little underpowered in my opinion. Armor allows you to be invincible until the timer goes away. Simple. Invisible does what it says, and it'll turn you invisible for a short duration. Now you can cancel both invis and armor by switching weapons while you're invisible or armored, but you cannot shoot. Unlike armor, you will be able to take damage and be eliminated. It's best to, to run away from a fight, but a skilled player, however, can track you down easily because you emit a noise while invisible, and the closer someone is to you, the louder the noise gets. Be smart with this one, agents. Reveal acts as a counter to invisibility exclusively. If a player goes invisible, you pop a reveal and it makes them visible and straight up cancels their invisible hack. You then have wall, which is what it says it is. You put up a big wall. It can be shot down, but it's kind of a waste to do that unless a player blocks off a tunnel or a building with it. It can be very annoying, but be warned because a player can use it as a use wall as a way to get vertical as well, so stay warned. You then have two good mobility mods that are teleport and slam. I teleport you to a teleport in whichever direction you're looking at. And it's really good as you teleport pretty far. Well, the other option is slam. Slam seems to have more utility since you can deal a lot of damage with it as well as being a mobility option. When you use slam, you jump super high up in the air and then come back down with a lot of force, causing a slam that deals a little more than 50% damage to a player. It's great for finishing fights or catching a player who tries to run away from you. You can also switch weapons while in the air using slam to cancel the slam and you'll fall back down to the ground. In my opinion, slam is the best hack to use in a lot of situations. And that's all the hacks. My thoughts? I think hacks are a very good idea for this game. You know, being able to have two at the same time and then being tied to a single button press is insane. I think invisibility duration should be much shorter to allow less players to be able to run away so easily. Also, heal shouldn't be a crutch for players to constantly use out of heal others in final sector. As when the final sector falls, players can just have a heal battle with armor, and the player who doesn't have heals plus armor is going to lose unless they maybe one shot eliminate the troll player. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I just wanted to explain all the elements this game has to offer for those who wasn't able to play the game on PC due to not having a code or being on console. I think this game is a high ceiling and it has a great feel to it from the music to the art direction. It's a great breath of fresh air from them in the battle royale scene. I stream every day over on Twitch, and I post short videos on TikTok after every stream. Each TikTok is also gets posted on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages, so make sure to follow them all to keep up to date with everything I do. Links in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a follow and comment on your thoughts about the game. I hope you liked the information I gave, and hopefully with it, even you can get the crown victory. Thank you for watching through the whole video. Please comment below and tell me what I can do better. This is the first time I ever did a video like this before, and I want to keep continuing to do so. Thank you so much, and I really value your feedback. Have a good day.